Greetings Pipe Pals, and let me be one of the first to congratulate their Royal Highnesses Prince William and Duchess Kate on the birth of little Prince George Alexander Lewis. He's a real cute gal. Gal for short. Get it? George Alexander Lewis. Great name. Don't know. Anyway, so there you go. So hip hip hooray. Hip hip hooray. Hip hip hooray. Okay. Now I got my monarchical uh, fix out of my system for a little while. Okay. God save the queen. All the good stuff. Yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> to be honest with you guys, after seeing the debacle of our political system, why not bring back the monarchy? Why not? Okay. Just my opinion. I mean, you couldn't do any worse, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe we could. I don't know. Okay, so that being said, uh, I'm here tonight to talk about a few things, and I'm enjoying a uh, wonderful pipe. This is an old Peterson I got back in 1986. Yes, it's got the P stem. I like I like the P system. I know some people don't care for that 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 the P lip. I, I don't have a problem with it at all. Hmm. But um, this is a pipe I bought many years ago. This is a, a replica of, a, of the Basil Rathbone Sherlock Holmes pipe. And I love it. And I'm smoking some Boswell's Northwoods. Not to be confused with McClellan's Virginia Woods. They're both English blends. They're similar, but they're not identical. Got a um, message from a J. Barba. Barba. Yeah, Barba, J. Barba, and I believe he was in Chile, and I think that's where he's from, and uh, he was asking me what kind of Boswell blends would I recommend. Well, let me tell you there, Jay. Northwood is uh, wonderful if you like um, English blends, but also if you're interested in Cavendish-type blends or aromatic blends, um, you can't go wrong with Majestic is nice. Berry Cobbler, excellent. The famous Christmas cookie, delish. Now, this one here, Cherry Smash. Many people love Cherry Smash. It's okay. It's, I'm not a huge, huge fan, but it's good. It's good. But I'm here to say that life is too short to smoke tobacco that bites, okay? And one of the things about Boswell blends is they're pretty much universal in the fact that they really don't give you a tongue bite. And so... I can't recommend them enough. So I've, I've always enjoyed my Boswell blends. And uh, I think I have a few more. Um, they also make a few more English blends as well. But uh, those are the blends that I've tried. And, uh, and, I'm, and Jay, if you're watching, I hope uh, that uh, that helps you out there. And I do believe that they will ship to all parts of the four corners of the earth. So there you go. Hmm. Yeah, I've always loved this pipe. I have a lot of sentimental attachments to this whole thing. And it's a good smoker. Well, uh, I'm here tonight just to kind of uh, vent my spleen a little bit. Not so much really vent my spleen, but just kind of talk about some things. Um that are in, in of import or interest to me, I should say. <clears throat> I haven't decided what I'm going to title this video. You know, Whole Foods Tobacconist. Maybe that's what I'll call this one. The Whole Foods Tobacco. Or to Whole Foods Tobacconist or something like that. As many of you know, I've still been working on um, getting rid of my excess adiposity. And 
one of the things that I decided to do uh, in the last couple months is is try different diets. Now, when I mean try different diets, it's not so much you know being uh, trying gimmick diets just to give myself an excuse to be irresponsible in my diet. That doesn't mean that that that's not what it really means. Although I have to say that when I discover uh, certain foods on certain diets, I go, well, I'm supposed to, I can have this. I can, you know, and I kind of, there's been a couple of times where I've been, I, I know I've overeaten a couple of times. So I don't want to give you the, the idea that I've been following these um, dietary regimes perfectly. I, I haven't, but I, I'd say 85% to 90%. This month I, I went, uh, the last month I did a juice fast for 30 days. And, uh, and then this month I discovered the paleo diet and I've been really intrigued by a lot of their uh, claims. And uh, if you're interested in the paleo diet, it's, it's, uh, it's a whole foods diet uh, and it's, it's interesting. Uh, it's very palatable diet, I will say that. Now, the, the thing that most of these diets have in common and something I've had to come to terms with is that I had to get rid of sugar had to get rid of refined carbohydrates and flour. Uh, and so I've done that and I'm kind of limiting my, even my salt intake. I don't do that that much, but so, and I've, and I've noticed, yes, I've lost weight, but more importantly, I've discovered a little bit more better health, you know, Hmm. And so, uh, but, uh, as of late, a couple of uh, weeks ago, I found a video, a document, well, well, first it was a documentary, and then I found some actual lectures on YouTube of a doctor named Caldwell Esselstyn, Esselstein. He's an MD, I think he's a cardiologist. Anyway, he has a book called uh, Prevent and Reverse uh, Coronary Heart Disease or, or Heart Disease or something like that. Now, that's a, that's, a, that's a very, very strong claim. And it's very intriguing. And again, he advocates a whole plant uh, diet. So not only is there no sugar and no refined flour uh, and salt, but also no dairy. And of course, big one, no, no meat products, no, no chicken, no beef, no nothing, no fish even. And, and if that wasn't strict enough, no oils. Say goodbye to your olive oil. But he, uh, he, he claims, and, he's, and, he, and he has some research to back it up, uh, he says that uh, if you have been eating the standard traditional American diet, then you probably have, uh, believe it or not, no matter how old you are, how young you are, you have some form of uh, coronary artery disease, maybe in its early stages, but you, you, you probably have some already beginning. And he said that he found this to be the case when he was a surgeon in Vietnam. And when they would uh, have soldiers, they had to do autopsies on young guys, 19, 20, they could already see with the unaided eye, uh, signs of coronary artery disease in 19 and 20 year olds. And this is back in the sixties. Imagine how bad it is now. So anyway, his claim is that if you eat his diet, Again, it's a very, I mean, it, it's a very radical diet. <laughs> he says, yeah, I know people say I, have a, I follow a radical diet. He goes, but I also think that ripping a person's chest halfway open and putting clamps in there and, and, uh, and, 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 and uh, grafting uh, uh, veins from your leg onto your heart is a quadruple bypass. That's kind of radical too. <laughs> Good point. So, but he says that coronary artery, artery disease is is a, a toothless paper tiger it's a kind of a very powerful statement he says it's it's a disease that's preventable and treatable through diet and his claim is that if you follow his diet you will reverse the coronary artery disease that you already have going on inside of you and you will actually uh, safeguard yourself from actually having a, a heart attack Now that's a, that's a powerful claim, and he says he has clinical proof to back it up, and he showed uh, 
you know, x-rays uh, of people who had blocked arteries and then three weeks, three months later, all of a sudden those arteries are been healed and restored. Now you're probably wondering where I'm going with all this. Um, and he did say that it was interesting in these Highland Papua New Guinea Highlanders. He said uh, they have the lowest rate, lowest rate of coronary artery disease in the world. And he made an interesting point, though. He said, but they smoke. He says they don't have coronary artery disease. They don't have heart attacks, but they they probably have some high high regard of uh, lung lung problems or lung ailments or lung cancers. He goes, well, but they smoke a lot. He goes, they, they, they love their smoking. Hey. <laughs> and I saw a video by Kel earlier this afternoon. And he makes a point that, again, tobacco, probably in its more pure form, is not, is not habit-forming. Now, now, after somebody's been smoking a pipe off and on for 27 years or my case probably 30 35 years you could say you're you can you claim you're not addicted well again there there have been long periods in my life where i don't smoke a pipe there just sometimes uh, i don't i mean for me smoking a pipe is something i do when life is good if i'm under a lot of stress now i know some people probably would think oh you probably smoke it's like a a uh, house on fire if you're in, under stress. I, I, I really don't. And in fact, I, I think even Kel said he, one time he was sick and he says, you know, I haven't smoked a pipe in a long time and maybe I should, you know, I got all this tobacco here. <laughs> I got to do something with it. And because you kind of you know, maybe even have to force yourself maybe to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to sit down and smoke a pipe. There was a period there when I first started making YouTube videos where I was kind of questioning, am I going to actually become really dependent and really start having an addiction like I've had with other things like sugar, <laughs> refined carbohydrates. Um, and, and just all of a sudden just start to start craving this. And, and I made a comment of not too long ago about, you know, if you're going to have a, uh, you know, a habit, have one that you're really not addicted to, but you can still enjoy. And I think there's some truth to that. Um, some habits, I mean, do you control it or does it control you? That's the bottom line question. And, and most of my addictions that I've unfortunately had to struggle with, uh, they, they were clearly were in the driver's seat. <laughs> I didn't have a raw choice. I was going along for the ride whether I wanted it or not. And, but pipe smoking has never been that way for me. I, I mean, literally, I... If I put the pipe down tomorrow and I don't pick it up for another year, and that happens, you know, if I, you know, if something happens where I get my, my focus gets, you know, I have to concentrate on something. Now, if I go through kind of really a bad time in my life, sometimes I just don't, you know, this is something I do is enjoyment. Uh, I make the two YouTube videos out of fun. This is a fun pastime for me. But if it ever became something that there was something, you know, serious in my life and I had to, you know, quit, quote unquote, cold turkey, well, it wouldn't be quitting cold turkey. I just put it down and that's the end of it. Uh, I'd probably still keep the pipes and look at them and polish them and kind of, you know, keep them nice and everything. And eventually I'd maybe give them to some friends and whatever, you know, if I, if I, the doctor said, you know, you got stage four lung cancer and you probably shouldn't. Of course, by then it wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't matter then, you know. But the bottom line is that um, I, I don't think, uh, and I've heard other people say s similar things, that tobacco by itself is, is probably not all that bad. Now, the, what makes cigarettes so insidiously evil are all of the chemicals that they lace with the tobacco. And those things are designed... They're designed to get people addicted. And, and that's where it gets back to this whole thing about eating a good diet. You know, this may seem to some people what a hypocrite. He's talking about good diets and he's smoking a pipe for crying out loud. Well, the tobacco is all natural. That's the good thing. <laughs> and tobacco is a plant. Am I right? Am I right? Huh? Am I right? 
But um, what I see happening uh, in our society is uh, when you go to the supermarket, you've got aisles and aisles and aisles and aisles of processed foods. I'd say 75% of your supermarket is all manufactured processed foods, whether they're microwave foods, frozen foods, you know, sauces, you know, uh, starches, you know, we have synthetic everything. Everything is synthetic. And a lot of it was all in the name of fat free. And that caused us a lot of problems. I mean, I'm sorry, folks, they're they're, they're, and this is the thing that I want to say is that there are a lot of people who embrace different diets. And I say, God bless you. If you're a raw vegan, go for it. Here, here's some raw tobacco. <laughs> That's raw. That's raw, buddy. Okay. Enjoy. You know, if you like eating 30 bananas a day and you, you just can't get enough, go for it. But, but if somebody else can't eat that way, well, don't, don't be a jerk about it. You know, or if you're a paleo kind of a guy or a gal, a lot of people love the paleo diet. Again, it's a whole foods diet, but it includes meat, okay, uh, and oil and dairy, okay, in moderation, I guess. The thing is that some people love that diet and it works for them. If it works for them, great. You know, so maybe you don't, you know, you're maybe you ethically are opposed to eating animals. By the way, I am a member of PETA, People Eating Tasty Animals. Um, okay, I know that was cheap. You know, some of my vegan friends I'm watching, they're probably shocked and horrified. But get over it, okay? Um, but I think that if you look at your normal supermarket, you know, everything in the in the center aisles is brought to you by Monsanto, okay? And all of that stuff, if you eat it on a regular basis... I think we all have problems. I know I have problems. You know, if I eat something that's processed, I just know it. I mean, and I feel terrible. You know, if I get something that has MSG in there, boy, my head feels like it's, it's told me it took a back, uh, back uh, an axe to the back of my head or my neck. It's just like, oh, you know, and, and some things like aspartame. Well, that's talk about an insidious little chemical there. Some of these artificial sugars. I guess they're considered by some people sugar alcohols, but some of these artificial sugars, oh my gosh, they're frightening. Um, and I don't care. I mean, yeah, we all know about uh, aspartame and or aspartame. Some people say aspartame. Some say aspartame. It depends how you, you know what, what part of the world you're from, I guess. It's like aluminum and aluminum, you know, tomato, tomato. Uh, but the thing is that uh, some of these uh, are these artificial sweeteners. They're actually more insidious than sugars, and sugar's bad. I mean, I have to be honest. With you, I'm a big sugar holic, and I just, um, you know, I have to be really careful with sugar. Uh, I haven't been diagnosed as stage two about diabetic, but they keep warning me it's it's just around the corner if I keep going the way I'm going. And I think I'd like to avoid that. Um, unfortunately, when I go minister to people who are in the late stages of diabetes. One of the most horrifying things. I mean, I think we're living in a, uh, medieval times and modern era. You know, you chop people's limbs off to keep them alive. That doesn't sound like a good therapy to me. Okay. So anyway, um, but I was looking at a lot of the stuff and a lot of the processed stuff. And again, and yes, I know even our vegetables and even our meats are, are highly processed. I'm not talking about the little package stuff. I'm talking about just the stuff from the you think you're getting it kind of straight from the butcher there, and or the or the or the vegetable aisle. A lot of that stuff too is processed, and that's scary. That's pretty dang scary. But the things that you buy in the center aisles, all the prepackaged foods and dinners and pasta dishes and all that stuff. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm kind of gotten away from it. You know, I, I don't tell, don't don't think I'm being a snob and thinking, oh, if you eat that, you're you're some you know, you know, uh, Cretan or something. That's not it at all. By the way, if you're from the Isle of Crete, I didn't mean that as an as insult. Forgive me. 
but uh, but I look at the the Whole Foods movement, whether it's the vegan branch of it or the the paleo diet version of it, version not virgin version. Extra virgin olive oil is good though, according to some. But again, it gets me back to the tobacco, and I think that if you're smoking good, good, I mean, do I dare say good, wholesome pipe tobacco? You know, um, I don't see there. I don't see it as being a problem. <clears throat> I just don't. Um, again, I guess if you inhaled, and I've had a, I have a friend who doesn't, it does inhale his pipe. He used to. He doesn't smoke anymore. But you know, he just he would shotgun that stuff, and I guess maybe, I guess maybe to some extent. But I, I've never had a real problem with, you know, you know, like needing it. Like I wake up in the morning and the first thing I'm doing is lighting up a pipe. I mean, I think this is the second pipe I've had this afternoon. Uh, second pipe after maybe four or five days. I think the last time I smoked was just a couple of days ago. But I think I was making a video. But anyway, it's it's not something that I I, I have to have. It's not something that that drives me or possesses me. Maybe that's a better way of looking at it. Hmm. It's something I do enjoy, especially when I'm when, when life is going well. Things are in balance. If I'm feeling even really super good, yeah, I'd like to celebrate with a pipe. But if, if I'm under a lot of stress, if I'm being kind of distracted and I've got some, you know, problems, what we say, say in life, you know, that we all have from time to time. I just, you know, and sometimes the old pipe is going to just, they're going to sit there for maybe a few weeks, you know, I'll get, I'll get around to it later guys. But, um, but anyway, so that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. Um, yeah, if you're interested, there are a couple names I'll throw out if you're interested in some of these diets I've talked about. The Paleo Diet by uh, Lauren uh, Cordain. He's a professor and uh, he wrote the Paleo Diet book. So that's an interesting book. Uh, and if you're interested in the other diet, the Dr. Esselstein uh, Diet, it's called uh, How to Prevent and Treat Heart Disease, I think it's called. Uh, they're, they're bestseller books, so they're, they're, you, know, you can just Google them and you can find them, no problem. Another book that's interesting is uh, Why We Get Fat by Gary Taubes. That's another interesting book. Uh, Gary Taubes is a very interesting writer. You know, he, his, one of his premises is, do, does fat make you fat? And if you're looking for a fun movie, maybe some of you saw the movie Super Size. That's, that's an interesting movie. But there was another movie, a guy kind of did a take on that, kind of went after a guy named Sperling, I guess the guy was that got the 25 pounds eating at McDonald's. And this other guy decided to show that he was, he, it, doesn't, it doesn't always have to be that way. It can be different. And he ate at McDonald's for 28 days, almost 30 days, and he'd actually lost 14 or 12 pounds, you know. But he did it in kind of a smart way. He, he exercised and he didn't supersize and he, he, he made smart choices. So, you know, he proved that, no, you don't necessarily de facto get, you know, obese by eating McDonald's. It's how you, it's what you choose that makes the difference and, and how you choose to exercise. Uh, there's also another movie, a documentary about, I think these, I think they're from Iraq, two brothers. They live in New York and they're, I think they're second generation Iraqi guys or they're Middle Eastern kind of guys, but they're just funny and hilarious. And, and they did the kind of the similar thing. They went to McDonald's and they actually lost weight and uh, lost some inches off their belt size and and but the but their problem but the, the message that they had was we should be grateful that we live in america you know and because we do have uh, uh, at our fingertips uh an inexhaustible resources for food clean it may not be the best food you know we when we when we call it fast food but 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 the thing was to enjoy what we have and and the guy the, the this one guy's point which i think is missed by a lot of people in the diet world is that you know yes we eat to be healthy we yes we probably eat to maintain our weight but the other human component is we eat because we enjoy it and if you're not truly enjoying your food uh, this is the point that this, these brothers make 
is that you need to sit down and enjoy. If you're going to eat something, enjoy what you're eating. Don't just, you know, shove it in there, you know, and just, you know, and you know, like you're, you're fueling up your car, you know, but whatever it is, whether it's a Big Mac or it's a, you know, some hummus with some jicama sticks or, or whatever it is that you like, you know, make sure you take time to enjoy it. And to me, that's part of the, uh, the thing about smoking a pipe. You know, most of us, now I'm not saying there aren't people that aren't addicted and they're pipe smokers. I'm not saying that they, are, they don't exist. They, of course they do. But the majority of people that smoke a pipe or a cigar, they don't inhale. And it's, it's, it's a relaxation thing. It's something that we enjoy. Okay. I mean, if I had to sit there, you know, and I look at all my tobacco and go, I got to smoke all that tobacco. And I just start smoking like I'm a machine. I'm not going to enjoy it. Now, probably 50% of this is probably going to get stale unless I do something really quick and put it in more mason jars and put it in little dark cellars and stuff. But the thing is that when I smoke a pipe, I actually enjoy it. It's something that I do and it relaxes me and I, I, I sit there and it's, 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 it's enjoyment. I enjoy the flavors and I enjoy the, the room note or the announcement. I enjoy the holding the shape of the pipe in my hand. I love the, you know, looking at the different grain and I look at just the, you know, cause I think most pipes are works of art. And that's whether it's a Missouri Meerschaum or a Peterson or a Dunhill or a Savinelli or a Mark Tinsky pipe or, you know, a Boswell, J.M. Boswell pipe or whatever brand pipe you love and enjoy, you know, uh, we pick these pipes based on aesthetic reasons. Most of us, I think, uh, you know, there are some people that don't like bent pipes. They only like straight pipes. There are some people that would never touch a straight pipe. They love the bent pipes. You know, I was always a kind of the, because I always thought Sherlock Holmes had the bent pipe. So I thought that was the best pipe to have. But now I have straight pipes. I have Canadian pipes. I have bent pipes. I have church warden pipes, you know, and I, and I enjoy them all. And they all are unique, you know, and they're, they're wonderful. So again, I think, and I guess I'm trying to say through all this is uh, one, check out Kel's uh, video on uh, is smoking a pipe addictive. That's a good little video. And it answers some good questions, but uh, you know, ask yourself, you know, um, if you like your pipe, uh, don't, you know, and uh, are, you know, it, maybe maybe you have a little bit of an addiction going on. I don't know. Uh, that's a personal. That's a personal call. Everybody has to make them themselves. But uh, but again, I think that a lot of it has to do with uh, processed chemicals that we have in our food, and in our water, and in our tobacco that. Uh, there's an insidious thing there that, you know, if we can get somebody hooked on something that makes them sick, then uh, later they're going to need something else, you know, whether, you know, you know, some kind of a, an operation or a pill or, you know, a regimen of drugs or some kind of a therapy, which is going to cost more money. And it seems like it's all these chemical people that make these chemicals in the food that are at the end of the line collecting both times. They're going to collect your money at the grocery store and they're going to collect your money at the uh, at the medicine store you know so I don't know if I want to give them all that money <laughs> I think if I just go ahead and eat this raw food whole foods and uh, try to maintain a healthy weight I think I'll be okay for a, for a while to come and I can and with those years that I have ahead of me guess what I can enjoy a nice pipe talking to you about good pipe tobacco and, and a nice life. All right, so there you go. That's my little thought on it. Uh, dieting, I guess, and diets and natural whole food tobacco. Have a nice evening. Light up your pipe, light up your world.